Well, I have one more question as a surgeon in this, is that as a surgeon, uh, <laughs> you know, I, many, of, many of my patients I refer to my medical oncologists who are really are specializing in melanoma, have a lot of experience with ipilimumab. What is your thought then in the community? You have a community oncologist who may not have the same amount of experience, and not just the oncologist, but the team around it at managing these side effects. What are your thoughts on that? So I'll answer that question. I think, uh, um, I think that we have a role to play in helping the community oncologists manage ipilimumab adverse effects. I, I try and encourage the, my referring physicians to call me when they give ipilimumab. Um, so that I can help guide them through some of the toxicities they're not familiar with. And it's actually, I think, uh, uh, an important mission of the sponsors of the companies to go out and train people to manage these toxicities because it, it, this won't be the only immune therapy that they'll be giving. They'll be giving ipilimumab in the advanced disease setting. They'll be giving uh, uh, other uh, immune therapy agents for other types of metastatic disease. So I think as time goes on, community physicians will become much more familiar with the toxicities of these agents. I I think there's even one further point, and that's the patient. And uh, uh, I think the community physician can be very attentive, and the nursing staff, which is probably even more important, can, can know exactly how to deal with, with the toxicity in the algorithm. But if the patient is going to sit at home with diarrhea for three, four days, which we've all experienced, that's when you really get in trouble. So I think part of it is also, I don't want to say scaring the patient into responding, but certainly making them as vigilant as possible and taking any symptoms seriously. Yeah. Educating the patient is very important in managing this drug. So let me, let me take the prerogative and just ask two other questions before we move on to, uh, to metastatic disease. So a patient comes into your office and they have uh, stage T3B, T4A, T4B, but no nodes positive. So they they're, they're clearly stage 2B or 2C. Do you offer them adjuvant therapy? Their, their prognosis could be as bad as some patients with stage 3 disease. So do you offer them adjuvant yeah, therapy? Absolutely. You do? We look for clinical trial, and there are multiple clinical trials right now that uh, are looking for these patients, whether they're uh, vaccines, whether they're the BRAF-targeted trials. We have an extensive discussion about you know, the interferon data in this subset. And I, I always bring my patients back for another visit before they make the decision. I think anyone with more than a 50% chance of relapse over five years deserves a shot at adjuvant treatment, at least with interferon if there's no trial. And that, you know, and one of the quirks of the staging system is the two C's will often do a lot worse than the three A's. So Absolutely. it's kind of a, it's begging for a change in the staging system. So two C's in general will do poorly, way over a 50% risk of relapse. So those folks I would offer adjuvant therapy to. They do very similar to stage 3B. So let me ask one last question.